Many of you guys have heard of Michael Chaffee. Michael was a former designer at Mattel who was hired by Knight Rider series creator Glenn A. Larson to design Kit's interior, his dashboard, his lower console, overhead console, and really define the look of the interior of the car. Later on, Michael would be hired again to design Kit's front nose, but that's a different story. Um, today, what I want to do, a lot of you guys have asked me over the years, you know, what happened to Michael Chaffee's original parts that he sculpted for Kit whenever he, he built and delivered that very first Trans Am for Glenn Larson to use in the pilot presentation of Knight Rider. Today, I'm going to reveal to you exactly what I think happened to those original parts. <laughs> You really should take a minute and check out our Patreon page. There's a link in the description below, link in the corner of this video right now. We've got all kinds of amazing things happening over there. We share behind the scenes photos that like no one has seen before. It's really, really cool. Stuff we have in our personal archives, um, videos, early access to all these videos, plus exclusive videos that you haven't seen um, anywhere else. So it's really cool. You should ch definitely check it out. Your support there helps us to be able to do things like, you know, restore the semi that's kind of right over there. So definitely appreciate it. All right, let's rewind to April of 1982, 41 years ago at the time of this video's recording. Um, Glenn Larson, Knight Rider, series creator and executive producer, hi hired a young a um, Mattel designer named Michael Chaffee to design and build the prototype, the first kit to be used. Now, Glenn Larson was putting together a 30-minute pilot presentation to sell the show to NBC, taking bits of his script, going out, filming those bits of the script, putting it all together, sending it off, and seeing if NBC wanted to buy the series. Spoiler alert, they did. Um, so Larson hired Michael Chaffee and Michael had, I think about three weeks to design, build and deliver the very first kit interior car. So in that short amount of time, you can imagine, you know, the, the, the stress of trying to put something like this together. So what I want to talk to you today about are those original parts and what I think, what I'm 99% sure happened to them. So we're talking the dashboard, the um, lower console, the overhead console, the steering wheel, the switch pods, and all of the related electronics that would were fit into all those pieces. Now, Michael Chaffe was not responsible for designing the first front, the first exterior look of kit. That was another man by the name of John Ward. Um, John Ward would go on to build the, um, the big semi-truck for the short-lived series, The Highwayman, in the late 80s. But anyways, um, after they filmed the pilot presentation and the show was picked up, Larson hired Chaffe again to design Kit's front nose. And we can talk about that a little bit as well. So, here's what I think happened to the original parts. So you have to remember, back in 1982, um, Michael Chaffe was given, um, or not given, he was lent a couple cars that he could use for his design work. Because obviously you can draw the stuff on paper, you need to make sure it actually fits in a Trans Am. Now, or, uh, Chaffe wasn't given those original three Trans Ams from Pontiac. So what happened was, let me back up here just to make sure everyone's on the same page. So um, it was early April, 1982, um, through some magic um, and through some, you know, uh, phone, backdoor phone calls and this and that, um, Glenn Larson was able to secure three identical black and gold 1982 Trans Ams from Pontiac 
to be converted into those first kit cars. We actually own one of those three original cars. Um, but there's evidence that Michael Chaffee was lent some other 1982 Firebird, specifically Firebird SE, and maybe just a base Firebird to use as a, um, as a, a test vehicle to place his, his parts in. So um, those vehicles would have probably come before he ever got the actual Trans Am that he was gonna install these parts in. So uh, that's, that timeline's a little bit fuzzy, but that's kind of what we think happened. Um, Michael Chaffee has been so generous. Anytime he comes out to a fan event, he shows pictures of the, the build of, of this uh, interior. And in those pictures, you can clearly see it's not one of those three original black and gold Trans Ams. You can see, I believe it's a gold Firebird SE, maybe a maroon Firebird. There's other cars that he had access to that he was using, and they're all covered in plastic to protect the interior because I'm sure they were all brand, well, they definitely were brand new or very close to being brand new because this was March, April, 1982. The 1982 Firebird first was available to the public in November of 81, so you're only talking four or five months that they were out. So it was brand new or close to new car. Anyways, so in these photos, you can see um, all of the, you know, the seats are covered in plastic, the consoles, all that stuff. And I'm sorry, we cannot show them out of respect to Michael Chaffee. He, um, you know, he likes to keep that for whenever he attends different events, he, he shows those. So you should definitely, if you haven't seen those photos, you should come to one of the various events, Southern Nights, um, any event that Michael Chaffee is at where he talks about Knight Rider, it's amazing. Anyways, um, so um, you can see that he built all of those original parts, the dash, the wheel, the consoles, out of uh, wood. And, um, and he, would, he would build them out of a soft wood and then coat them in body filler to get kind of all the final lines and curves and tweak things, things like that. So those original parts, whenever they were finished, he never made any molds of any of the parts. He made the original parts and gave them to Universal, and then that was the end of it. So all of the, the original dash, the upper console, the lower console, the steering wheel, everything was wood at the core with body filler covering it for the most part. And then he would mill out, you know, the LEDs or, or uh, like the, the voice box or mill out the locations where the speedometer and the tack go and all that stuff. So, um, so when Michael delivered all these parts, they were delivered as wood with body filler, okay? The steering wheel, many of you guys have noticed whenever he, um, the original delivery of that car, the steering wheel had a nice flush finish and actually had the word Knight 2000 on it right underneath the, the uh, Knight head emblem. That was actually a piece of um, like styrolite that was a filler in that steering wheel. The actual steering wheel had a hole in the center of it. That's that was the mounting or the uh, access point to um, bolt it onto the steering hub. And then Michael Chaffee just built that little styrofoam cover, painted it, and you never knew that by you know just watching the show. It looks like it's fiberglass, nice and smooth. That's actually styrolite. All right, so Michael. Um, delivered the car, they filmed this pilot presentation. This was still April of 1982. Larson sent the video, or went to New York, I think, sold the series, and then it came to the point where, okay, now we need more cars, or and we need to be able to replicate these parts. All they had was what Michael Chaffee delivered in the car. So, Universal Studios took Michael Chaffee's original car disassembled, pulled the steering wheel out, the dash, the upper console, the lower console, the front nose when he came in and redesigned it. He pulled all those parts, or the studio pulled all those parts off and made molds of them. When they made a mold of the steering wheel, they removed that Styrolite cover that said Knight 2000 on it, and it never made it back onto any of the replica parts. For those of you who have um, worked in fiberglass and molded parts, Tell me, how do you think if you took a part that was made of wood at the core and thick layers of body filler and you put a gel coat on and you put layers of fiberglass on, 
whenever it came time to pull that original buck out to give you your mold, how durable do you think that original part would have been? At best, you'd get cracks in the body filler, but at worst, it would come out in pieces. And I think that's exactly what happened with all of the original parts. I think whenever Universal Studios molded them, I think it destroyed the original parts, or at least damaged them enough that the studio said, well, we don't need these anymore. We have the molds, and they chucked them. That's my guess. None of Michael Chaffee's original fiberglass pieces made it back into that hero car. In fact, if you look at that hero car, even whenever they came back and filmed more of the pilot later on, you can see the dash just looks m like a much lower quality. There's seams in the fiberglass, um, lots of imperfections. Um, even the, the steering wheel has the hole in the middle. The, the night emblem looks different. It's just, it's just a much, much lower quality. And that's because the studio for better lack of a better term, didn't care, right? They just had to pump these parts out. Um, they decided to put all of their efforts into the insert dash. Now, the insert dash was a dash that was made specifically to sit on a sound stage, and that's the one that was used for all the close-up shots in the series. Um, the studio made that one look pretty and took they took their time with it, made sure gaps were nice, made sure it looked really good. But the ones in the car, they didn't care about because you just kind of see them as a drive-by on a low-definition TV, you know, CRT from 40 years ago. So um, that's what I think happened to all of Michael Chaffee's original parts. They are um, no longer around, unfortunately. But thankfully, some of those original molds have survived and original parts from those molds have been cast over the years. So even though his, his, you know, his original pieces are long, long gone, I'm positive of it, um, the, the, their, uh, and their children are still around, I guess you could say. The, the parts made from some of those molds are still out there, which is um, really kind of cool. Now, the... Um, the electronics. So as far as we can tell, based on historical photos and our analysis, I think those original electronics were um, reused. So, so the original electronics that Michael Chaffee's team built for that original hero car that was delivered to Larson, whenever they took all those parts out and they remolded all the, or they molded all of the, the fiberglass, those original electronics did go back in to the car. There is some question as to the functionality of the, the electronics after all of this happened. Because we know when Michael Chaffee um, delivered that first car and he built those, his team built those first electronics, we know that there was some animation available to the, the dash. Um, they had <laughs> knobs and switches off camera where they could raise the tack bar and lower it and count up the digits and count down and, and cycle the lights and all that stuff. Well, whenever they took the car apart, did all this fiberglass work, put it back together, it would seem that a lot of that functionality might have been lost in that uh, hero car. And again, they didn't really need it in the hero car. They needed it on the insert dash. So that insert dash had... Um, that functionality to count up, count down, cycle, different things. And it actually makes me wonder, maybe the electronics that Michael delivered in that first hero car made their way over to that insert dash. That would probably make the most sense. And then they just copied, you know, the look of the electronics for um, the hero car. Um, you can see in some scenes that some of the electronics on the dash move a little bit. So there was some logic behind the electronics, but not nearly as sophisticated it was when Michael delivered that first um, car. So if I were to guess, uh, and this is a really good guess, none of his original uh, fiberglass still exists. And I would guess that his original electronics probably ended up on the insert dash, which sat on a soundstage. Now your next question might be, well, where is that insert dash? We don't know. If you've been following this channel, you know we own the insert dash from the third and fourth season. We've yet to find the original insert dash for seasons one and two. Hopefully one day that'll come up. All right, 
think that about covers it. So there's your right from, you know, all of our research that we've done over decades. That's what we think happened to Michael Chaffee's original parts. Unfortunately, they are no longer out there. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. Hopefully this was uh, entertaining and educational for you. And um, we'll be back soon with uh, something else. So stick around. If you're not already subscribed, hit the subscribe button. It makes everyone just a little happier. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time.